Now I'm going to take my model and create an extended period simulation with it. First thing I want to do is make sure that any pre-existing changes are cleared out. So I'm going to go to the master changes table using this shortcut here and click the clear button. Now all my changes are gone. This is the extended period simulation menu. The basic settings for running an EPS are to check the use EPS box and to specify the amount of time for your simulation. 24 hours is typical. In addition, you can apply control switches for pumps. Usually this is based on tank levels. Uh, in my system, my controlled element is the pump and I'm going to turn it on and off when the tank is filled and back on when the tank begins to empty. I need to reference what my uh, switch grades are so I'm going to go back to my tank. My high level is 1100 and my minimum level is 995. So I open this back up and I say I'm going to use a value not equal to my minimum. It's best modeling practices to use a switching value that's just a little bit above uh, your minimum level and a little bit below your maximum level. So my low level being 995, I'll use um, 998 for my low switching grade and we'll use 1097 for my high switching grade. So three feet uh, below the high grade and three feet above the low grade. Now it's going to turn on so you can toggle between on and off here. So the pump is going to turn on when the tank is low and turn off when the tank is filled. So now I've uh, created my control switch and I have specified my EPS time. I'm going to save my model. The next step is to add a demand pattern. I go to the demand pattern table using this icon here and I am going to load a set of pre-existing demand factors uh, the AWWA diurnal curve which comes with the software. The factors are loaded, the multiplication factors, and they will uh, vary the demands over a typical 24-hour residential type relationship. Now I'm ready to run the analysis. And now I can view my results one of several ways. Uh, one very nice way to look at results, particularly when they uh, occur over a time period, is to use the graph. I can view the results for an individual node. Um, in this case, I'm showing two sets of results. This is a new kinetic feature. Uh, the left axis has pressure results and is represented with the red line and the right uh, axis is flow results represented with the green line. To turn the double parameters on and off you use this button here. Now I'm displaying a single parameter. If I wanted to change the parameter that's being displayed I can do that down here. Now when I go back to my graph and show two sets of results, I'm showing pressure and head which are, are very similar. Now I'm going to apply contours to my map. I do this by going to this contour menu. Remember that if you right click you can see the classic version of the menu. I'm going to work with the new version. And in this menu we set several parameters about the contours. We pick the number of, of uh, segments within the contour, uh, where the key appears, what parameter we're contouring, and how those contours appear. So we are going to contour pressures and a default series of pressures pops up. It looks like we have uh, the maximum number of lines which is 12 and we can change the uh, appearance of that. I'm going to show you a gradiated contour. 
If I click this button here, some additional menu uh, options pop down and I can um, change the, the values for each contour level. I can change the colors. Uh, I'll show you what uh, another color scheme might look like. This is called weather map. And now, um, so uh, my contours have automatically updated. Now that I've got my contours, I can use this uh, set of control buttons down here. I can play the map animation and it will step through the different time cases and the contours will change along with it. So I can play and pause uh, and reset the case that is displayed on the map. I can also select the case using this slider bar. And since I can go ahead to a point where the pressures are low and the pump is likely off and pressures are being uh, maintained by the tank, reset it to the beginning. And lastly, I am able to use this record button to create an AVI of the contours as they step through these cases. And I'll show you now what that looks like. At the beginning of the simulation, the pump is running and the pressures are high. There's some variation as the tank starts to drain and um, the demands go down. But then at some point, the pump turns off and the, the cool colors indicate lower pressures as the tank is supplying the pressure. Then, as seen here, the pump turns back on and the pressures go back up again. When this is finished, um, an AVI will be created. I have this menu here and um, the, the video is being produced as the bar indicates. Now I'm going to turn my contours off. And the next thing I'd like to show you is creating a profile. There is in the kinetic interface this new quick profile option. And if I use that, it will create a default path through the system, a reasonable one, and bring up this profile. Let me size it to our viewing screen. Um, this is an animated profile. There's uh, some variations on this that you can select. This is our normal option. There is a simple option, which uh, is more like a graph and uh, nice for putting in reports. Shows the pipe as a single line and the envelope a little more simply. And there is also the ability to return to the original profile that was from the early versions of Pipe 2000. And that's what this is. When you select the Preferences menu, under the Map Layout area, there is this checkbox which says Non-Animated Profiles. When you select to view static profiles permanently, this option gets checked. To go back to Animated and Simple Profiles, simply uncheck this box, and now the profile will go back to being the animated version. Within the animated version there are uh, several settings that you should be aware of. Um, there is the ability to change the appearance of the piping, the nodes within the piping. This pipe, for instance, is shown as actual pipe length. Because the pump and the reservoir are overlapping, if you were to select equal pipe lengths, it would spread these out so that you could view all the different components. You can add information to your profile, such as pressure values uh, and flow values. And when you uh, play the animation, you have the ability to capture that as an AVI here. And there are some settings for the AVI. And there are also some settings for the animation itself. For instance, how long it takes to get through the animation. If you find that it passes by too quickly, you can increase the total cycle time. And here is the animation played from beginning to end. And you'll see the pressure line slowly going down as the tank drains. 
and then raising back up as the pump fills it and begins to drain again. You'll notice that the uh, time bar went to the end and came back. That's the default setting. It's known as a cycle rock. If you did a loop that would go through the entire time simulation and come back to the beginning and start over again. And so these are the various settings. And all of these, um, for the most part, apply to the simple view as well. If you want to specify a path to the system, um, first of all, I'll clear out this default path. And I'll go to this menu here, which is for tables, graphs, and profiles. And these are the different profile settings. Um, I'll want to be in group mode. And let me close this for a second. I'm going to go into group mode and select my starting point. Let's say I want to include my tank in this particular profile and my ending point. So now I have starting and ending. Then in the menu I can say I want to create my profile from the leftmost node or the last selected node. I'll choose left node. Now I'm in the simple view. I'm going to go to normal so you can see what the tank looks like. And I'm going to, I've got loop and I want to play this and you'll be able to see the tank as it fills and drains, which is an interesting aspect of the animated profile. I'd like to conclude this series by quickly taking a look at all the menu options. These first two buttons are versions of all of the main menu buttons with a narrative description. Here's the second row. This is the quick save, undo and redo. These are for map functions. This is the refresh map button. This is will clear any selected items, whether they're in group mode or layout mode. This is the file menu. The import and export options are found underneath the file menu. Um, this is also where you would print, uh, reload your current file, this is the edit menu. The options under here are the fixed mode, some additional zoom options. There are a whole series of editing options. These are the orthogonalize and auto orthogonalize. Um, this is the old apply and undo options. They're, they're different than undo and redo. If you are a sprinkler system modeler, this is the Generate Sprinkler System option. This is Cut, Paste, and Copy. We also have some options such as Insert Node and Delete Node, which also appear in the Node Information windows. And Delete Intermediate Nodes. So if you have an import with a lot of intermediate nodes, you can use this here. And this is a Repeat Pipe option. There's, uh, although most group editing you'll do within the Node Information uh, window, here are some uh, ways to create groups based on different parameters. And um, you can uh, invert pipe selection. So if you have a group and you want everything that's not selected to be selected, you can use these invert nodes and pipes. And lastly, there are select all pipes, select all nodes, and select nodes that fall at the end of a branch line. In the view menu, here's where you use the option to find a node or a pipe. Uh, you can also find uh, an, an internet map location. If you have uh, a saved view or you want to create a saved view, there's these options here. And if you want to turn off uh, intermediate nodes such as uh, hydrants or valves, if you've got a lot of them in your model and you want to declutter for uh, print, for instance, you can do that here. Uh, in our um, presentation, we've looked at the, um, the Analyze menu. Uh, also of note is a Find Purge Parallel Pipe, which is useful after you've just laid out a model to um, find any accidental parallel pipes that you've created. Also, this is where you find the Water Quality menu. 
and the calibration wizard and menu. We've seen the labels menu, the contour menu, the quick analysis and quick profile, and the back to map button. And in the second row, here's where we set our uh, pipe emphasis, similar to contours. This is for graph table settings and uh, the profile we just looked at. If you're capturing the map, there's some settings for that here. Here we have uh, information about the cursor notation. This is the uh, informational window that pops up when you point to a specific node or pipe so you can set what appears in that. Under this option here, which is facilities management, this is where the new the inventory cost option now appears. Uh, pipe break, hydrant flushing, pressure zones, and also the ability to distribute demands throughout the system automatically. And if you are looking for the pump system curve graph, it is also under facilities management, where it was before. This menu uh, controls uh, push pin notes that you can attach to the map. Uh, this is where you would uh, use text nodes or apply a north arrow. This is the background map menu, same as it was before. The internet map menu. Grids. Colors and sizes of your pipes and nodes. Tools menu. This is where you would put a legend, a distance scale, a title bar. This is your system data. This is the same other data menu from the classic interface. Preferences menu. Extended period simulation with control switches and optimal pump switching now accessed under this menu. Here uh, are some design tools, uh, constraints, skeletonization, and optimal design, which helps you size pipe diameters within a system. We call this the components menu. This is where you would enter library elements, create uh, additional fittings or edit the fittings table, create or edit active valve. This is where you could enter meter data, uh, if you had a meter record that you were associating with the system. And this is where you can create a pipe type as we did in the first part of this series. This is precision setting for various parameters within the model. You can set the decimal place for a particular parameter. Changes menu, which we worked with for pipes as well as nodes. Demand pattern, which we saw. This is the analysis report. I currently don't have a report. This is the report setup. So if you were using limited output, this is where you would set that up. And to get to the, the data tables, you click on this icon here. And of course, this is the help menu. In addition to some uh, PDF manuals, um, and units help, which is very useful. And as we said before, this box here brings up a series of editing and navigation tips. Uh, most importantly, Alt and click to pan, so click and drag your mouse pointer to pan around the system. And to change how the data, node and pipe data boxes um, are associated with the working window you can use these options here and you're also able to configure the toolbars to it with these buttons this concludes our tour and tutorial of the kinetic interface